In this video we will see what changes discovery of fire did in Homo sapiens and other species. By about 300,000 years ago, Homo erectus, Neanderthals and the forefather of Homo sapiens were using fire on daily basis. The best thing fire did was cook. Foods that humans cannot digest in their natural forms, such as wheat, rice and potatoes, became staples of our diet thanks to cooking. Fire not only changed food's chemistry, it changed its biology as well. Cooking killed germs and parasites that infested food. Humans also had a far easier time chewing and digesting old favorites such as fruits, nuts, insects and carrion if they were cooked. Whereas chimpanzees spend five hours a day chewing raw food, a single hour suffices for people eating cooked food. The advent of cooking enabled humans to eat more kinds of food, to devote less time to eating, and to make do with smaller teeth and shorter intestines. By shortening the intestines and decreasing their energy consumption, cooking inadvertently opened the way to the jumbo brains of Neanderthals and sapiens. When humans domesticated fire, they gained control of an obedient and potentially limitless force. A single woman with a flint or fire stick could burn down an entire forest in a matter of hours. The domestication of fire was a sign of things to come. Sapiens could now scare away lions, warm themselves during cold nights, and burn down the occasional forest. Thanks to the blessings of fire, they had smaller teeth and jaws than their ancestors, whereas they had massive brains, equal in size to ours. Now let's see how sapiens spread out of East Africa. Scientists agree that about 70,000 years ago, sapiens from East Africa spread into the Arabian Peninsula, and from there they quickly overran the entire Eurasian landmass. When Homo sapiens landed in Arabia, most of Eurasia was already settled by other human species. What happened to them? There are two conflicting theories. The interbreeding theory and the replacement theory. According to the interbreeding theory, when sapiens spread into Neanderthal lands, sapiens bred with Neanderthals until the two populations merged. If this is the case, then today's Eurasians are not pure sapiens. They are a mixture of sapiens and Neanderthals. Similarly, when sapiens reached East Asia, they interbred with the local Erectus, so the Chinese and Koreans are a mixture of sapiens and Erectus. And now, according to replacement theory, sapiens and other humans had different anatomies, and most likely different mating habits and even body odors. They would have had little sexual interest in one another. And even if a Neanderthal Romeo and a Sapiens Juliet fell in love, they could not produce fertile children, because the genetic gulf separating the two populations was already unbridgeable. The two populations remained completely distinct, and when the Neanderthals died out, or were killed off, their genes died with them. According to this view, sapiens replaced all the previous human populations without merging with them. If that is the case, we are all pure sapiens. Imagine how things might have turned out had the Neanderthals or Denisovans survived alongside Homo sapiens. What kind of cultures, societies and political structures would have emerged in a world where several different human species coexisted? How, for example, would religious faiths have unfolded? Would the book of Genesis have declared that Neanderthals descend from Adam and Eve? Would Jesus have died for the sins of the Denisovans? And would the Quran have reserved seats in heaven for all righteous humans, whatever their species? 
Would the American Declaration of Independence hold as a self-evident truth that all members of the genus Homo are created equal? Would Karl Marx have urged workers of all species to unite? If you find the video interested, please subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.